So we wanted to show the extent of Venezuela's economic and social collapse by really focusing on individual people and kind of embedding in the lives of people around Venezuela to give readers a sense of, for example, what it's like to try to save your daughter's life when there's no antibiotics in the country, or what it's like to show up at high school every day and find that all your teachers are out on the food line. So we set out to do this group of features looking at how the crisis in Venezuela is affecting different facets of daily life. And what we discovered is just a huge humanitarian crisis. Everywhere we looked, people were skipping meals, losing weight, were struggling to get the medicines they needed, um, seeing people murdered and that becoming normal. Everyone we talked to had been mugged. Um, it was just so much worse than I had really understood. With this series, I was continually balancing the journalistic imperative to stay uninvolved with what I felt was my duty as a human being. So some of the worst cases were following a high school girl for a couple weeks when she wasn't eating dinner, she wasn't eating breakfast. Um, I also had people confess to murder to me when I was writing about mob justice. Um, I was reporting on food lines for one of these stories and an elderly woman collapsed in my arms and there was nobody else around who was willing to take her to the hospital. I think the hardest um, situation was probably when we decided that we wanted to write a story about how families were getting through the broken healthcare system. And I originally thought that I would want to follow a child who ultimately dies because of shortages in Venezuela. And there are a lot of kids who aren't making it because there aren't things like antibiotics or anti-seizure drugs. But I got a little ways down that road and I saw that it was going to be excruciating to just sit back and watch a kid die. And so I talked to my editors and we decided that we would focus instead on a kid who looked like she was going to make it. And so we ended up following a girl who was getting better little by little but with severe damage because of the shortages. And we decided that if she had a relapse we would try to get the medicine she needed flown in. And luckily she just kept getting better. One of the things that I really came to realize during this series is it's impossible to write features that are going to allow people in other places to relate to a situation without yourself staying pretty emotionally open and staying pretty empathetic. And to be a hardcore reporter, you don't have to put the story above everything. So you don't have to watch a child die to write about medical shortages. You don't have to leave an old woman in the street if she falls down while you're out reporting. Um, you don't have to force a teenage girl to do an interview with you if she hasn't eaten all day. And I started figuring out the places that these ethical issues were going to come up and trying to talk about them with my editors beforehand. And for me, that was a good model um, to just understand that it's going to be a conflict. It's going to be a hard balance between objectivity and just duties as a human being and to try to come up with a roadmap beforehand when possible. For me, one of the greatest things that journalism can do is help people understand what's going on in a situation in a really visceral way. Like that could be my child or that could be my parent. Um, I think with crises like the one that we see in Venezuela, there can be a temptation sometimes to write up these horror stories that are just the most miserable and the most sensationalist and really exotify the people living through these crises. But I think that journalism can also have the opposite effect and show readers that people in places like Venezuela don't have some kind of immunity to pain and suffering, that they're fighting just as hard as anyone would in these situations and are desperate to protect themselves and protect their families just like anyone would be. Um, I think at its best, journalism can act as a kind of empathy creator.